This is actually the backing plate for the brake on uh, that Bowling 650 tractor. And it's kind of odd. Uh, the setup there, the way that gearbox is set up, it actually kind of self brakes, which you've you know found out if you've ever tried to push one, it won't push unless you uh, unlock it. Um, what the brake does more than anything is brake the input shaft. Uh, so you have that input shaft turning once the motor starts, and when you go to put it in gear, it will just grind the gears away. And there's a lot of talk on the forums on these older ones gears being so worn out from people not replacing the brakes. So this is kind of a goofy deal. It sits on a lever and just kind of there's a round drum there. So it's only making contact in a small patch there. Well that was completely worn out when we got it and uh, the video where we're tilling the garden uh, we were actually in a rush and wanted to get out there and use them. Uh, so we just went looking for what we could rig up at the time. And we actually had this hard piece of rubber um, and we just bolted on there some very small bolts instead of the uh, factory rivets that held the actual friction material. And we had some contact adhesive, threw a little on there hoping that helped. So we loaded them on the trailer and we went to take them up to the garden and uh, I went ahead and set the parking brake and I shouldn't have. We got there, it was kind of chilly. Uh, I was helping, my son was there riding a go-kart. So I was helping him get going on that. My cousin starts these up, uh, the tractors to warm up doesn't realize I've set the parking brake and it's set there and you can really see how it just ate in it's so it effectively ruined our our brake shoe uh, basically before we ever got to use it uh, we had tested it and it worked uh, you know at least well enough for the moment um, so I knew I had to find something do something that was going to hold up a little better uh, I definitely don't want to tear the gears up on this thing I went to Sam's Bowlands not Jason Bolins, but Sam's Bolins, uh, com. There's a website there. Uh, they've actually got a lot of salvage parts and a lot of new replacement parts, uh, aftermarket parts for a lot of these Bolins. Uh, this shoe, I'm not sure what all models this was used on, this bracket like this, uh, but at least a few of them. I think that 800 was the same as the 650. And when I was looking at the catalog and looking on forums, uh, it looked like quite a few of them were the same model. And it's just going to sit on there came with a couple of brass uh, rivets. So these brass rivets are going to go in here. Uh, and these are so difficult to get a hold of being so small. And just shove through those factory holes and we're going to flatten them out up here. So being brass, if we ever do wear down to the point uh, that that hub starts to get into the fastener, uh, the brass should definitely wear and give and not wear on that, uh, that flat face of that pulley on the shaft. Um, but I don't think that's ever really going to be a problem, right? That shaft is round, kind of like this. We're going to see a wear there in that center area, much like we saw on our temporary brake. Uh, it's probably never going to get out around the fasteners, but if it ever should, brass is going to give way. It's not really going to tear them up. You can definitely tell with this pad, it's some type of friction material. I don't know what's in it, uh, but definitely looks more like a clutch friction disc or a, a brake shoe lining. Uh, certainly much more effective and going to wear better than a chunk of rubber, uh, even hard rubber. So we're just going to flatten these down, being brass, they ought to be pretty easy. Um, I had to kind of think of a way to set something up on this. So here's what I ended up with. We're going to zoom in there. I have a socket held in my vise, and I'm actually going to use that to hold up the the back side of the rivet there as I try to flatten this side. Now, I'm not a blacksmith. Uh, the guy we bought these from is actually a very good machinist, a pretty good blacksmith, and I've seen him, you know, with cold rivets, hardened steel, actually very impressive what he could do there. Um, but these being brass shouldn't be difficult at all, but nobody will have to help how bad I look at doing this. And I certainly don't think a carpenter's claw hammer is the uh, appropriate tool here, but it's, it's what I've got and what I'm going to go with. And it looks like more than anything the socket's going to give unless I tighten up this vise a little more. What I really want to make sure is that rivet's pushed all the way up from underneath so that I'm holding the pressure down here. I 
come back and flatten that one a little more, but it's certainly pretty good for the moment, and that'll allow me to go ahead and get this second one in before I do the final flattening. So we're fairly flattened here. Uh, I'll probably want to come back and do that a little more, get that a little tighter. But I want to put uh, the second one in before we start that. Okay, so I'm going to zoom out just a little bit here. So here's what we ended up with. Uh, I definitely think I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, again, they're just brass rivets, uh, but they're pretty flattened. That shoe is on there very firmly, very tight. Those rivets should hold. They're pretty tight there. So I think that'll work. Um, on this end, it simply hooks on an open J-bolt, and then there's a bolt here. And you can kind of see the, the linkage up under there. I don't know if I'll be able to show it on the camera. But when you, when you break and clutch, this comes up, uh, pivots back here, swings up here on this end, and actually then, if this were the, the hub on that input shaft of the transmission, that swings up into it. And so it breaks this input shaft uh, and keeps you from grinding the gears. We can see the brake drum surface on this is the input shaft for the transmission so basically the drive shaft um, and you can see my leaking seal back there in that differential or rear end uh, it's all one assembly back there so there is a hook back there um, get you a view of it there so this assembly actually sits upside down comes over the top here This is very awkward to do. Sorry about the motion sickness. It was over the top of that hub. I might have been on the other side to put this on. Yep, we'll have to go to the other side to put it on. Moving to what would be the left hand side or driver's side. We can see this hook here. And then on the far side, we can see the bracket where that bolt's going to go through. This actually has to come up above. It's impossible to do with two hands, trying to hold a camera. So we're on that, and we're sitting on top of that hub where it's going to contact. And that's actually going to go up and over, and that bolt's going to go through. So that we can see when we press down, we're going to contact uh, that hub on the drive shaft. And our bolt will simply go through right here. This is a half inch on this one. A half inch head on both the bolt and the nut. I did not have a lock washer, so I put a little medium strength thread lock on there. And of course you've seen somebody tighten down a, a bolt before. Uh, I've got a wrench and a ratchet. We'll get it tightened down. Not going to have to be incredibly tight. We're not going to go baby Huey on it. Uh, that's a small bolt and we don't want to snap it off uh, or squeeze that bracket together. But I'll tighten it up and then we'll start it up and see if it actually breaks.